Welcome to Rogue Dungeon. I cannot believe that I have not played this game before. Everything about this game screams, this is what you're looking for in a dungeon crawler. And so finally I get to get this to the table. This is the second edition. I do not have the first edition. And uh, I don't even think you can purchase it anymore other than perhaps maybe the version on Steam. So there is a digital version of this game. The rules are a little bit different. I don't think they're too drastically different. Uh, but I, I don't think that you can actually buy the first edition of this anymore. The second edition, I believe, is now sold out, uh, and they are talking about a new print run, possibly some expansions. Very, very exciting. If you do want to see the ultimate in comparison between first and second edition, Daniel over at the Dungeon Dive, check that YouTube channel out. It's incredible. He is doing work over there. Uh, has, like, literally broken down every change in the game. It's amazing. Like, every card side by side, here's the differences. It's quite something to behold. It, it is absolutely a great watch. Um, so, so this, on the other hand, I have not had a chance to play it yet. So I literally will be playing it for the first time right now, but I have a, a very solid idea of it. One thing I do want to point out that I absolutely love at first sight, you know, sometimes, you know, you read a lot of rule books, you might get um, like rule book fatigue. Like why does everything have to be a 30 page book or you know, even a 15 page book is a lot of rules right here. In fact, this is, you know, with the back cover, 16 pages we can, we can, we can say here, right? So what I do is I'd like to think, okay, well, you can ignore the components page, right? There's set up pages in there usually, and you can kind of get, you know, a, let's say this, a 16-page manual. You don't need to read all the clarifications right away the first time you're, you know, reading the manual. You can you can get a game down to like, you know, eight pages of rules out of its 16, right? I'm pretty sure this game has three pages of rules. I'm pretty sure it's page six, seven, and eight. I love this book. <laughs> it's amazing. Everything else is an example, right? So it's combat examples here on page nine. So that little bit here uh, is going to be the rest of the combat. So that's all combat. And then here's an example, an example of combat again, an example of gameplay, right? That's it. And then here's a whole other thing to do later on. Uh, and then clarifications. There's a list of like monster abilities and whatnot. So you can really just kind of charge right through this. I really like it. I think, I think that's fantastic. And it starts out very simple, right? What you do is you pick your hero. Now, uh, the game does come with a whole bunch of cool little screen printed meeples. Can I get this over here? That looks a little weird because it's green. Uh, they're great and all except for that I... It, it is kind of a bummer because what they've done here is they've got... Is it the same picture on both sides? Maybe it's a little bit different? Yeah, I don't know. In, in either case, you don't have this character, you know, right? You have the male version of the Crusader, which is on, on the back of this. And I don't remember what game I used to play. I made exactly this character, and I don't remember what game it was, and I, I loved it. And so when I saw this, I said, you know what, I've got to play the Crusader first. She reminds me of a character I created in some game long ago. Then you need to pick out five levels of your dungeon. So these are made up of cards. If you're not playing large, do I have that? The large dungeon mode, look at that. On the back of these things... Uh, of these these sheets here, these 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 big pieces here that fold in half, by the way, uh, you have a whole big map, which would really be cool to give you the exploration feel of like a bit of a mega dungeon, right? I think that's awesome. I think that's really cool. Uh, and there's four of those, so that does mean that one of them is on the back of this board here, so you wouldn't be able to use that, but I mean, not like you really need it. Uh, and as far as just using the cards, what I'm doing here is just going to shuffle these up. You can flip them around, whatever you want to do, it doesn't matter because there's, there's cards, there's dungeon layouts on both sides of it, right? So basically the idea is shuffle them up, and they're kind of all well balanced the same, so, you know, they have the same amount of stuff on them. So we need five. One, two, three, four, and five. They're the same, you know, they all have three enemies, three traps, and then one of all the other colors, right? So that can go right here. We are on floor one, and then we have different enemies, right? Floor one, two, three, four, five, and then this is a boss, and then these are cursed items. I have no idea how any of this works. Uh, these, th this here, it, this is, these are special cards. You go through these, right? So they don't get shuffled. If we find an event that says, take the gem of seeing, we know that it's in this deck with the hand on it. We just go find it. This monstrous pile over here, the, the, I had to make it two because it's just too many cards when they're sleeved to stand up properly are just items. So I'm just going to put them right here and they, everything's been shuffled already so that we can get going. I chose my Crusader to start here, and on the back of your cards, of course, this is this is not the case, uh, you have your character icons on the back of them here, right? so you know exactly what this character starts with. So the Crusader is going to start with a loaf of bread, 
discard to pass maze and gain an additional two experience or discard to gain two health that's nice too and one of the amazing things about this game is you can just discard stuff like whenever you want you can roll the dice and then like oh i need to spend some experience points to level myself up i'm gonna do that right now then we'll resolve the die like it's it's crazy like you can just it's kind of refreshing how like i don't want to say loose because that 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 makes it sound like, bad in a way? Like, oh, the, the rules are, are kind of wishy-washy. That's not at all the case. Not at all the case. I also start with a shield here. Discard to reduce damage taken by four health. You start with a sword. Spend one luck token to inflict one damage. I start with the gold cup, right? This is uh, counts as two loot cards for trading. And then you have three special abilities. You do not start with them unlocked, right? So this says I need seven uh, in my primary stat, which is strength. I start with a three, right? So that's that's up here as well. Blessed, I need five in my primary stat, and this I actually do start with turn undead. Now I can cast this one time, or I can, and I believe this is new to the second edition, I can refresh that skill uh, uh, during resting, which is pretty awesome. I think you can just pay experience for it. Yeah, there's a little experience icon right there. It says four. Uh, experience, I have zero, uh, uh, but we do have all of these. We're going to use a lot of these little experience tokens here. And you spend them. I love this, right? Like, if I need to level up my strength, I can spend. It might be hard for you to see. That's a f uh, three experience to level up to have a four. And then five, and then eight, and then 12, 16, 20, 25. And uh, there's nothing here for 11. Perhaps there's a way to get there. Now, the other thing, let me see what we have here. What, what, what else do we have? We have a story. You are a wandering adventurer seeking glory and treasure. Your journey has led you to a once sprawling and prosperous mining town nestled among the mountains at the edge of the realm. A pestilence has taken hold of the land. Crops have withered and died. The mountain that once produced gold, iron, and riches is now enshrouded with a death-like silence, lurking with horrors that pour forth to raid the town on moonless nights. There are tales of great ominous evil, of a great ominous evil, and many perils that dwell in the depths of the mountain. The townsfolk have already sent several valiant heroes to investigate, but none have returned. Offering a vast sum, they turn to you to investigate and vanquish this evil from the realm. Will you cower in the face of almost ba -ba -ba -bum, certain death? Or will you set out upon this quest and become a legendary hero? I love it. All right, I know it's taking me a little bit of time to get started here. Just to, just a quick blow through of this, right? Here's all the different pieces. There's a lot of cards in this game. The setup is dead simple. We kind of just already went through it. Uh, and then here is, you know, all of us know how this works with dice and, and you do, you know, skill checks and everything. I'll get into the combat here once we get there. But one of the awesome things about this combat is they have abilities and it's based on what I roll. Roll, right there is no like separate phase for the monsters i roll the die and what happens happens but i wanted to get here to this page for something very important you see here it says game difficulty now i do not believe that this is in the first edition of the game either i might be wrong but i don't think so players may wish to scale the difficulty of their play experience by adjusting the number of dice rolled for any d10 roll and choosing one of the rolled dice as the result if a player re-rolls, they re-roll all the dice. So that's right. This is a three-player game, but it's funny. My brain just has this check mark as like, this is solo only. I, so they talk about players, and I'm just, nope, this is player to me. So we have a beginner gets to roll three D10s. Now, I am definitely a beginner, but that almost sounds like it'd be too easy. So why don't we just scrap the invisible one here anyway? <laughs> so let's get rid of this. And we, we can play on intermediate, right? We're going to have this. We'll roll these two dice. They'll come up here, and those are our skill checks, and see, I probably would have failed whatever it is horribly, even with two dice, so I still think that's fair. Uh, now, we have six hit points. That's what's down here. We start with three strength, two agility, two uh, intelligence, and then we have a six vitality. That's right here. Six hit points. It matches our vitality. You cannot go above that. We start with two luck, and luck, the way that luck works in this is pretty cool. Basically, I can spend a luck token to adjust a roll by plus or minus one, or just to do a complete re-roll. I love it. And I can spend more uh, than one if I want. So if I need to change a five to a three, let's say, and I'm filthy with luck, I can actually just spend two and not even have to worry about re-rolling. Uh, none of us need to go over this. We know what experience points are. We know what intellect is. We know what strength is. We, we understand all of that and how that stuff works. Here is a little page that we might pull up quite a bit, though. This is on the back of the book, mind you, right? This is this is on the back of the book, and the only difference is, is I've added at the bottom down there the colors of the rooms, because to save my life, I will not remember what they are other than red is enemies, 
the yellows are traps and the rest, you know, I might want to just double check them here and there and just, just make sure I know what I'm doing. And then here's, you know, a whole, uh, whole thing about, uh, you know, uh, keywords and whatnot. And the turn overview, we'll pull this up once, I think. I think we're, we're pretty good to get started here. Uh, one last thing is I do have camping gear. And I, I think if this is not very clear in the manual, uh, it makes sense when it's explained to you. Whether you are playing one, two, or three characters, all of these are in the game all of the time, right? So as a solo player, I get all three. Otherwise, you would divvy them up however you see fit. And the camping gear is how we rest. Because in any good dungeon dive type role-playing game here, right? You need to rest on the stairs. You need to, like, feed yourself, right? In between, uh, you know, stairs. And this is how we're going to get some, some hit points back, right? You discard that and roll a d6. All heroes gain the roll plus one health. If not on a stair, so yes, I could just camp in the middle of the dungeon and the roll is below the dungeon level, draw a monster and resolve combat, but you do heal before that happens, so you, you are not completely out. So I think we're good to go. I know that was a little bit long and rambly, but uh, I'm running on four hours of sleep in the last 40 hours, so I'm doing what I can here. Here's how we keep track of what floor we're on. Level one enemies here. I know I didn't shuffle all this stuff on camera. I'll tell you what, I'll shuffle the enemies, but I'm not picking up these massive stacks of little tiny cards uh, again. <laughs> so uh, I just don't don't want to do it. And I think there's a lot of duplicates in here. Like there's probably a lot of uh, like healing potions and stuff like that. Ooh, there's a goblin. Okay, so, uh, oh, the other thing is, is I'm going to use, you have all these cool little screen printed meeples. They're really cool and all, but I want to make sure that we have like the highest visibility so you can see where I am. So I'm not going to use the one of the awesome crusader because it's 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 the it's it's uh, blue or something. It's harder to see. So I want to use this orange one for the bard because it really stands out here. So there's there's our level one enemies. We enter the dungeon right here. Now we can. Uh, you don't have to clear out every room of the dungeon. The whole goal is to just get to the to the exit, right? But we need to gain experience points to try to get, you know, uh, stronger to fight this this boss here, which I have no idea what the bosses look like in this game either, by the way. Uh, so this will be this will be a fun little experiment here uh, on intermediate mode with two dice. So now the white one, the white gem, uh, white rectangle, it says, is trading and exchanges. Now. I do know, and, and, and I have played the first edition on Steam a couple of times, so I have a rough understanding of how the game flows, right? So basically, we have to move somewhere. We're going to go here and resolve this room. So I'm just going to put this little marker here to show that I've done that room, and it looks like it's this guy here, the Gnome Trader. If you choose to trade, draw five loot cards and place them face up in this room. You may discard two loot cards or one treasure to take any one of the loot cards on this room, any number of times afterwards, discard the remaining loot cards on this room. Okay, cool. So, so there's just a trader who set up shop on the first floor in the first room of this little place. He's even like off to the side a little bit. <laughs> the the way the, the the layout of this is great. He's just he's just kind of in his own little spot right in the front door there. Hey, uh, I got some supplies for you. So we may as well see. It doesn't matter which stack I take. Uh, these are all shuffled together. So watch me watch me have like a really bad stack and a really good stack. So it said, what, five? So we have throwing blades, energy core. Oh, wait, the energy core is not supposed to be in this game. So some of these cards have that little icon. Oh, I didn't even realize some of these would have that. I took them out of all the rest of them, right? So if you look back here, just off camera, I have all of these that have like the mega dungeon mode. It's like a temple or something. It's not a, like the dungeon mode or the sewers or whatever it's called. So I didn't realize that some of those would uh, would be in here as well. So like this one specifically is in the dungeon. So that's something that I'm going to have to look out for here. Okay, so we're good. Now, what we've got is a very unfortunate draw here, I feel like, because I wanted to find me a weapon, something that has, that uses my primary stat, right? I'm a crusader, so strength is my primary stat. That means I get to do um, uh, plus damage, right? So when I roll a die for damage, it's it's going to be plus damage based on, you know, what, 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 what weapons I have here, right? So it's, it's going to do one point of damage, right? I guess I'm saying this very poorly. If I had two weapons with red things, I could do two damage when I successfully hit. If I had three weapons that had a red uh, icon on them, a strength icon, I would do three damage when I successfully hit, right? Because that's my primary stat. You can see on your character, your primary stat has like this little glow around it. So we know the Crusader is using strength. So this is, this is rather unfortunate to not find a weapon I could use. Uh, however, um, what is it? One, it wants two. 
right? Five loot cards. Uh, you may discard two loot cards or one treasure. So I have a treasure. I start with the gold cup. I don't think the gold cup is going to do us any good in this little adventure here. So let's go ahead and discard this gold cup. I'm going to put that in the back back here. And I'm going to take, see, I really probably should take a breastplate, but I'm going to take the lock pick. And I'm going to take the lock pick because there's no card limit here. I can have all the stuff under the sun here. But what I want is I want to be able to utilize that lock pick if... Uh, something happens where I need to get somebody out of jail or whatever, right? So that's that's that for that card. I'm just gonna have a little discard pile here, just just off camera. So that was that was it for that room. It's done. I could have traded again, I guess. I could have traded maybe a shield and some bread away, but I want to acquire more things, and paying two things for one is not great, right? Uh, so that's why it was nice to get rid of my little golden cup. So let's move on to a trap. A yellow dungeon, or a yellow room here, right? So we're going to move here. This yellow gem faces that way, and that's for persistent rooms. Now, I realize that I'm not using the board here properly. You're supposed to place the room board here, but I'm, I'm trying to show this for you visually. I think it's better if everything is more middle of the screen. Plus, this gives me a convenient place for a discard pile. So let's go ahead and draw a yellow card for a trap. Ha! <laughs> what are the odds? Okay, one hero must make an intellect check and must repeat this card until you pass. Pass if you discard a loaf of bread. That's hysterical because I happen to have a loaf of bread, don't I? Didn't I start with it? I did. I have a loaf of bread. So I'm going to discard this. You start with it. Amazing. So I pass. And what does it say here? Uh, on a, let's see. Fail on a roll of... Oh, this is interesting. Make an intellect check. All heroes take damage equal to the failed roll plus dungeon level minus nine. Pass. All heroes gain two experience points, right? So I am all heroes. So let's see here. I'm every hero. No, I promise I will not do that again. All right. So <laughs> we passed the maze. Now the problem with the maze is... Oh, we, gotta, we should probably leave the maze here, right? So the problem with the maze is that it's persistent. The maze never changes. So it was kind of really bad for me to draw the maze on floor number one when we're locked behind, like, right away, and we're locked behind this. So if I come down here to fight this level one creature, I then have to pass the maze again, and I don't have another... I don't have another... Draw one loot card, nothing happens, all heroes take damage. This card's a little bit more fair in the second edition. In the first edition, I, I, if I, I'm convinced you just, this, this room has murdered me on the PC before. Uh, so, yeah, I think that, oh, you know, I need a better way to mark this. No, I guess that's right. Okay, so if we were to go down here to fight here and then come back up here, I'd have to pass the maze again. I think I don't want to do that. I think that's dangerous, right? So let's go ahead and go over here. It's yet another trapped room. Persistent as well. Oh, wow. We are not off to a good start. One hero must make a strength check. Pass if you discard a transmute rock to mud scroll. And again, it's persistent. All heroes take damage equal to the dungeon level. So, oh, we are <laughs> we are in trouble. I don't like all these traps because I'm going to have to pass this one many, many times. So here's what we're going to do. We have... We have to pass a strength check. So basically what this says is I need to roll a 1, a 2, or a 3 to pass that, right? I have to be under. Oh, dear. So we need to roll really low, and I rolled very, very high. Now we can discard a luck token, so I'm going to flip this from the 2 to the 1 side to re-roll and just try my luck. I cannot believe it. A 2, so we passed. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> now... One thing that you do get, it says all heroes gain two XPs once per game. So we have to keep in mind that we do not gain experience for that ever again. Now, that means that I have four experience points now. That's what this little token is here. However, I already want to spend three of this experience to go up a level here in my strength, right? So we're back down to uh, one experience point now. And that's, that's, that's the flow of the game right there. So... Uh, this is unfortunately persistent. This is uh, oh, they're both. Why are they both? They're both facing down. Okay, well we'll we'll do our best to remember here. Let's see. This is we'll say this one's facing up. I've got a million little gems here. There we go. Okay, so that one's facing up. Uh, so we're here. Let's go ahead and see what what is purple again. Purple is weapons or combat bonus. I like that. And the green one is a boon or beneficial. So both of these are fantastic. So let's just come down here first. Let's see what this card says. This card says the alchemist lab. You find a potion, drink it, roll a d10. Oh no, all kinds of bad stuff can, can happen here. So do I, I don't I don't think I get to roll two. I think that's probably just for for combat and skills maybe right. Like this is just see what happens. This doesn't say. 
for any d10 roll and choosing one of the rolled dice as the result. So I guess so. This is a d10 roll. Let's do. Let's just keep rolling two dice. I actually kind of like the way it feels better than just a single die. Uh, okay, so we have an eight and a five. So do we gain one luck or gain two experience? Ooh, God, I'd love to have both of those, but unfortunately that's not the rules. So let's go ahead and say we gain two experience. That puts us back to three experience points, which is not quite enough to go ahead and level up strength again, which is my primary stat, which is a big deal for me. I really need that to happen, but that's a lot of fun, that little alchemist thing there. Okay, so this one's done. Now you're supposed to put these little things, this gets maybe a little cumbersome. Now we come back to this room, the crushing wall, we once again have to roll a strength check. Our strength is now four. Uh, so we got a two, so we're good. We do not get the experience again. Okay, so we're going to move on to this purple room. Let's go ahead and mark this as done. Uh, well, at least we're here anyway. Purple. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I promise you I shuffled these, and I had no prior knowledge of what was going on, but look at this. A humble prisoner agrees to join you if you manage to free him. Make a strength check. Pass if you discard a lockpick, and I have a lockpick. Uh, let's see here. Pass. Okay, so I'm going to discard the lockpick, right, so that's going to go down here, uh, and take the cell sword from the specialty deck. All right, so somewhere in here, and I should have probably put these in some sort of order. So you can have like little followers helping us out, right? This is a fantastic mechanism, right? We found this guy locked in a prison cell, and now they're going to help us out and follow us around. So right on. I can dig it here. Okay, so gain plus one, have, ooh, look at this. So this is this is my, my plus one uh, in combat here, and we'll, we'll get to that. I can't, have we done, we have, we have managed to, to skirt all the combats. Uh, let's see, and then I can I can I can basically sacrifice this guy to just not take any damage. I do have a shield that can survive four damage, but this will take an entire hit in combat for me. So this guy goes over here. We have the cell sword. Nice. Okay. So this is uh, this is looking good so far, but we do have to come back once again. We are back in the crushing wall. <sighs> All right. We need a really low roll of two. Good deal, right? You see how easy? Okay. I have literally died on the first card in the first dungeon room on, on Steam on first edition. It has happened. Uh, okay, so we're going to go here. It's another trap. This is a horrible room layout <laughs> that absolutely hates me. Swinging Blades. This is another persistent room. Oh, no. Oh, we can't even see this one. Okay, you dodge your way down a hall of deadly swinging blades. Make an agility check. Take damage equal to the dungeon level. So to make an agility check, I would have to roll a one or a two. So let's let's make this a little bit better. Let's spend all three of our experience points to go ahead and level up agility to three. So now at least I have better odds, right? We were looking at uh, 20%. Now we've got a 30% chance of, of not getting wrecked. Let's, <laughs> we got wrecked. Let's spend our, our last luck token. I can't believe it to just re-roll these. I need a really low roll here. There we go. We got a one, which is an always succeed, and that does give me two experience points. I really need to make sure that I keep... Wait, it was two, right? I need to make sure that I keep some of these on hand, because I've there's fours and fives and tens in here as well, so maybe make it not so hard on myself to find these things. So these are the three guys, I can't believe it, that we have uh, encountered, and this one is going to face off to the right... Okay, I got that one, that one's that one. I don't know if I'm doing this right or not. Let's get into some combat. Let's see how combat works. So let's come up here to this red room. So I've got a little red gem up here, and I can't believe I had persistent all the way down the line here, right? Unbelievable. <laughs> okay, so whew. encounter. Draw one monster and resolve combat. That's all that says, right? Okay, so we are on the first floor, so we need to draw a monster from floor number one. We have a wolf, so I don't have any meat, right? So if you look here, it shows you what they are like weak to, essentially. So there's a there's a scroll there. I think that's like talk to animals. There's some meat. There's stuff like that, but that's that's not what's going to happen here. So this guy is worth one experience point if we can kill it. It has two life points down here. We need a seven or better to uh, to attack to to successfully hit it, and it does one point of damage to us. So let's get into. Combat! Some, okay, so, right, so we drew combat, so we, 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 I mean, basically, we get to fight it, or we can try to evade it. We're gonna fight this guy. We are going to, there's only one creature, we're gonna target the wolf, and essentially here, it's, it's try to roll, um, higher than that number, and so that is a seven. So what I'm going to get as a bonus is, I'm gonna roll the 2d10, 
I'm going to take the highest number and I'm going to add my strength to it to try to get over that. So I could roll a three and then add my strength score of four and be at seven and then it hits me and I hit it. Uh, if it's above seven, only I hit. If I'm below seven, only it hits me. And, and we're all out of luck tokens. We blew them on floor one. You don't get very many. You certainly do not get them very easily. Uh, so the big thing here is the combat roll number four here, right? So they, they've got these little words here, these mav and have, right? Monster attack value is the, is the mav, right? The printed card value plus any bonuses or modifiers. They don't seem to have any at the moment. Now, if you end up fighting two creatures at once, that little sword that's a seven goes up one per the other creatures in the room. It's pretty crazy, right? So so they like pack animals essentially, right? But it's not just wolf, it's any any creature, any fighting that you're doing. Uh, so you can see there if the the calculate your hero attack value, your hero's primary ability level plus combat roll plus bonuses or modifiers, right? So if I'm above the monster attack value, we hit it. If we're below the monster attack value, we get hit. If we're equal, both are hit. And then it looks like 10 is an automatic success, and a 1 uh, is an automatic, uh, we always get hit, monster special abilities. To these, this guy doesn't have any special abilities, so it's it's just that simple. So we're going to roll our 2d10 here and hope that we get a, what did I say, a 3? This should be doable. Oh, I got a 10 and a 3. Look at that, right? So I, I hit it once, okay? So I hit it one time. We, we were successful with our 10 plus 4. We had a 14. We only needed a 7 to hit it. Whack! Now, the thing of it is, is how much damage do we do? Well, oh, we actually got a plus, we have this too, a plus one half. That's this. So we actually got a 15, okay? Because we have this guy working for us. So the sword here, because it's 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 our one and only one red weapon, it only does one damage, right? So of course now I need little hit point markers that I don't have handy. I was not prepared for all these little tokens here. There we go. So we've done one damage to it. That's it. Next round of combat, please. And again, I just need a three or better. Uh, there's two fours, right? So four, five because of this guy. Six, seven, eight, nine is above seven, so we have now killed the wolf. Fabulous. So how does combat work beyond that? The loot phase, everybody's favorite, right? After defeating a monster, discard the monster card. Okay, so I'm going to have a whole mess of those. Uh, discard the monster card, draw a loot card or two for level five monsters, and gain experience tokens equal to the monster's level. Divide them up however you want. There's only me here. It's only one player. So that guy was only worth one experience point right there. So I'm going to go from two to three experience. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think, oh, did I spend too much? Did I spend three experience on there? I did. I should have only spent two experience on there. So I actually have four now. Because I have two plus the one I shouldn't have spent plus that one. So I have four experience. So let me spend two of those to bring my intelligence up, leaving me with just two again. Yeah, whoops. Whoa, that was a weird slip there. Uh, it's I just I saw, probably saw the giant number there and did it wrong. Okay, so let's uh, let's move on here with some loot. Boom. What did that guy have? Oh, how funny. A lockpick. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, you could never have too many lockpicks, right? Cool, successful combat. Unfortunately, we have to then tr pass this trapped room once again, and this is the Swinging Blades. Now, yeah, let's see here. Swinging Blades, we need a, we need a what now? To pass an agility test, we need a one, two, or three? Oh, okay, that was an instant success. We got past it. All right, we, we know exactly how to get past those Swinging Blades. We come down now to another round of combat, and this says, the golem with ruby eyes. You find a golem with ruby eyes. You may leave it alone or fight the golem. Ooh, if you defeat the golem, draw two loot cards instead of one during the loot phase. Now this guy requires a 12 to hit. I am not gonna fight this guy. This guy is way too strong. You could get four experience points from this guy, but uh, no, I will get destroyed. I have no special anything for this guy. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, and skip over that guy. So that room is now complete. We just left the golem alone. We're gonna go to this little round blue one here and see what's there. I love how this, oh my God. <laughs> no way. This needs a lockpick, doesn't it? You enter a room with several locked safes. Any hero may discard a lockpick or a skeleton key to draw two cards. Well, guess what? I happen to have another lockpick. and I get to draw two loot cards? Uh, so we have a scroll of fireball, and we have a holy water. Discard to inflict d6 plus 1 damage to zombie skeleton, shadow white, skeleton warrior, ghoul, wraith, vampire, or mummy. It just occurred to me that when they, when they're, they're going to need to be very careful with their expansions here, because, you know, if a card, very specifically, like, those enemies should have had a keyword, undead, on them, and then this could just say, 
do d6 plus 1 to undead, and then in an expansion they could release new undead creatures and not have to reword everything or make little exceptions for it. So that's just me. Uh, Fireball, discard to do d6 plus 1 damage. I love that. Fireball is fantastic. Oh, I have little spots for all these things, and I'm not really using them properly. Backpack here. No, we're good. Okay. So that's that's kind of, uh, of 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 how that all goes down, right? I guess I could find a little token for it, and basically that's it. The only thing that we could do now is run back through all these traps, which is not going to happen, and fight this guy, or we come here and we go to the stairs. So the, we've already killed the guy there. Oh, we we bypassed the uh, the the ruby or the golem with ruby eyes, and we go down the stairs. Now what happens is we have to clear all this mess off. And then we could choose to eat. Now, because we didn't take any damage due to my incredibly talented gameplay, uh, we don't need to, to rest or anything, right? I think that we can just go down. I think that that's, that's, that's the, the easy thing to do. So we, we managed to fight a wolf, and we dodged the, the guy. So we really only killed one thing on floor one. How crazy. Okay. So uh, really, all there is to it is we peel this off. When we go to floor two, we find the stairs. And you can see that all of these are like, it's, it's a different layout, but they're, they all have the same breakdown of gems, right? Like they all have three red, three yellow, and then one of every other color. I've never seen this room in my life. I feel like bad things are going to happen. Now here we do have our choice to go ahead and... Um, you know, rest, but we don't need to. So I think we're good. All of this stuff, including these nasty traps, thank goodness, go away. And these are all what, yellow rooms? Okay, good deal. So where do we go first here? Oh, floor two, we gotta remember that now. You know, these enemies are more difficult now. Uh, so, what was the blue one again? <laughs> uh, specific item requirement. So all we really have now, ooh, we don't have like, any specific items, right? So maybe that's not great to go here. Let's go see what this trap is. Okay, so let's let's go hit up a trap, and we find, ooh, this can't be good. A cave in. Large stones begin to fall as the room begins to cave in. Make an agility check. Pass if you discard a transmute rock to mud scroll, which we do not have. Fail. Take damage equal to the dungeon level. Pass to uh, gain two experience once per game. So here we are again. So ah oh, man. I need a one, two, or three. Oof. So we have no way out of this. So we're going to take two damage. Okay? There is there is no exceptions to that. Dang, that's a bummer. We got hit by a cave-in, and it stays there. It's persistent. Right? That trap is forever there. Oh, man, alive. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so uh, we can come in here and fight. So let's go down in an over, and there's a red gem. So that says, encounter, draw one monster, and resolve combat. Easy. We can do that. Level two monster. Let's put a red thing. Here's a lizard man. Check that guy out. So already, oh, I need a better weapon, man. I love how this creates just like the you're in the dungeon feel. Like it really does exactly what you want it to do. It has a weakness of whatever that is. It looks like a tankard, which I do not have. So let's go ahead and, and roll against the lizard man here. So we need a 10. Uh, we only have two experience points, so I can't buy anything to make us any better. Really, uh, oh, we have our plus one because of our guy. So we essentially have four plus five to our roll. Okay, so we basically need a five or better. And we've got a six, thank goodness. Uh, six plus four is 10, 11. That's good enough to hit. And we're only going to do one point of damage. So let's put that there. Whoops. And then, yes, the opposite side of that is a two. So we're going to do it again. And we still need the same roll. We just need a five or better. There's a 10. Boom, we got it. So we've done our two points of damage. We have killed the lizard man. We have gained ourselves two experience points. Is up there in the corner. So we are going to find... Two more. I'm just going to put it in there like that. And we have, what else? Some loot. We have a loot card. We have, ooh, look at this. A potion of vitality. I don't know where to put my discards. Okay, so discard to gain one vitality. Now, when you gain vitality, I'm, I'm just going to do it now. There's no reason to hang on to it, I don't think. So we're going to drink that. And our vitality is going to go up. But I do believe we gain that hit point as well. So we have five hit points out of a max of seven now. I like it. Now, some people might want that potion of vitality. In fact, I know that there are. I know that there's, like, this prison cell guy here, right? Make a strength check. Let's see. Somebody needs healing in here, I feel like, right? Like, the prison cell one, we just got lucky with lockpicks. 
I feel like I've seen a card. I remember the guy needed healing, and it's the dwarf, I think. So that might not be the right item, but maybe it is, and I, now I don't have it. Okay, so we have four experience points again. I would love to have some more to keep just going with my uh, my stuff here, my, uh, my strength. So let's go down here and go to this other yellow room. We're going to put a gem here saying we've checked it out. And we go to a yellow door here. It says a bat swarm. You are swarmed by hordes of bats. Pass only if your hero discards a torch. I don't have a torch. That room is garbage. Take damage equal to the dungeon level. So we just took two more damage. <laughs> wow. Wow. That was god awful for me. Okay. I mean, there's nothing I could do about it either. That's the worst part. Uh, so which way? Here, we'll, we'll put that facing left. I think there's... Oh, that's it though. They're gone. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, this is not a persistent trap. So they're gone. Finally. Uh, I love that idea too. Like you have you have a torch, right? I love it. And then of course the bats wouldn't stay there. You chase them away with your torch. All right. Uh, so that's good to know that they're not there. Let's go over here to this purple one. Again, the purple ones are weapons or combat bonus. The orb of destruction. You encounter a magical glowing orb and try to harness its powerful radiating energy. Make an intellect check. Pass. Take a weapon from the specialty deck or discard. I get to, like, pick. Uh, and my intelligence is only three. So here we go. Yeah, we failed miserably. Nope. Um, and we failed it, and it just goes away. We can't do anything in this room. It is toast. That's a bummer, man, because I really wanted a weapon. Now we can come over here, and the bats are gone, so we don't have to worry about those anymore. So we can come down here and do uh, whatever this red combat is. So we've done one half of the dungeon. Encounter, draw one monster and resolve combat. I love, you know what? The artwork in this second edition is so good. It is so much better than it was in the first edition. It is, it is, it has a look to it though. I'll say that. It, is, it has a very specifically weird, almost like, not plastically, and almost like a Nintendo 64 game, like Clay Fighter or something. I don't know. It has a really interesting look to it. Skeleton Warrior. Oh, okay, look. So Skeleton Warrior has two hit points. Now, the question here is, how do we, we have, we have like a million ways of dispatching this guy immediately. So number one, Fireball is going to do at least two damage because it's a D6 plus one damage. So we can just smoke this guy right off the bat. Number two, we have our turn undead skill. Discard to inflict D6 plus one damage to zombie, skeleton, shadow, white, skeleton, warrior, yada, yada, yada. Okay, fine. We could, we could do that as well. Uh, holy water is the exact same thing. So we have we have a lot of ways to just like handle this guy, including he's not that hard to kill, right? Because we're gonna have a we just need to roll a five or better. So I think I'm just gonna go in with my with my swords uh, or my sword or my flail really uh, and attack this guy because we only need to roll a five or better because we have a four plus one for our cell cell sword. So let's go. We just need a five or better. We got it. Boom. So there's one damage on him. All right. If I need to keep track there. And round two of combat, let's go. Eight, we got it. Okay, 13, so we killed this guy. We saved our gear. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and gain two more experience. So I'm gonna replace this two with a four. I'm gonna spend it all here in just a moment. Anyway, you don't gain anything for experience, so you need to be spending those as you see fit. And then we gain a loot. I don't know, maybe I'll take this stack. Shield, discard to block any damage. That's fantastic. We have lots of ways to defend ourselves now, I think. I like it, okay. Level two enemy, moving along here. Uh, it looks like we can cut across the bottom over here and hit this little white room. This, this uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm having a hard time keeping track of my gems here. This little white clear one here, a wise man. An old wise man offers to join you for a fee. Any hero may discard two loot cards or one treasure to take the wise man from the specialty deck. So, oh, see, this is where, oh, man, see, that'd be nice to be able to get rid of, of something I didn't care about. I don't, everything I have, I, I kind of care about, right? I need a way to dispatch uh, undead. I mean, holy water might be the least valuable thing I have here. Ah, oh, man. That's such a bummer. I have, I have, I'm gonna have to just pass. I cannot take the wise man. I just, there's no way to do it. That's a bummer. Uh, okay, so let's come up into this room here. Oops, and it looks like we can, uh, I think I can like walk in the backside here and go to this little green one. So let's see what that little green one is here. And that's this one, a witch. 
God, the art in this game is so cool. Oh, I never finished my thought on that. You can see the evolution. Whoever this artist is, and I feel terrible, actually, that I don't have it offhand. Like, look at the manual. Look at the art on the manual. It is so much better than it was uh, back in the day. The artist is John Smith. There's a name that I cannot forget. <laughs> there we go. So, so this artist, John Smith, doing good work. Uh, I think it's great to see the evolution of an artist, you know, and uh, it's, it really shows in uh, their work here. You encounter an old witch. She offers to brew you a potion for some of your health. You may spend one XP to gain health to health any number of times. Okay. Uh, dang. So I have three hit points. I can have a maximum of seven. So let's do it twice. Let's spend two experience to get fully healed. Four, five, six, seven, there we go. Uh, that is kind of not great, but hey, you know what? Not dying is pretty great. So let's see, let's put that over there. Okay, so we're gonna come over here now, and I think that this room is guarded by that little trap. I I maybe disagree with some of the artistic choices, the way you know some of these things were drawn, like they're cool looking and all, but if there's any ambiguity in some of them, it's this, or in this game, it's, it's this. Uh, there are some, I don't know if I can find an example right away, where it's really not super clear what is guarding what on some of these. So I don't know. Some of them are, are just a little a little funny to see. Like they're generally, for the most part, they're okay. But I, I've no, I know that I've seen one. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's not in this. <laughs> maybe it was in the first edition. Maybe it's a little better. Because this makes sense. Or maybe it's in here. I don't know. I, I know I've seen at least one, I guess. All right. Invalid complaint. My bad. Let's go here. We'll go to the yellow Gremlin, oh no. I have PTSD from Four Against Darkness, Invisible Gremlins. Gremlins try to steal your equipment. All right, I hate this game. <laughs> Make an agility check, discard a loot card, or pass and gain two experience. Now they're not persistent, so let's let's say this. Let's say, mm, let's, okay, so it's three experience to get that to a four. Let's, let's blow that, all right? So there we go, we're down to one XP. We have an agility of four now. And we need to roll a one, two, three, or four to not get, not lose our stuff. Oh my god. <laughs> a 10 and an 8. So once again, the gremlins win the day. Discard a loot card. Um, I mean, I guess there goes the uh, the holy water. They, they took my loot. Dang it. I hate you gremlins. All right. Wow. Oh, and they're in any, they're in a, yeah, God, it's not like a floor thing. Oh, wow. There is such a wide array of enemies in this. This is wild. Okay, so, well, that's, that was not great. That was not, uh, not my favorite thing to have happen to me here. At least we don't have to go back through it, right? So let's go ahead and go, what's the blue one again? Specific item requirement. I don't have hardly anything, so this isn't great. So maybe we can go here, kill a guy. Maybe we get lucky on the loot draw, and we find... Uh, something that we can use in that blue room, and then we can get out of here and go down to floor number three. Okay, so let's see here. We draw a red card. Encounter, draw one monster, and resolve combat. They don't all say that, by the way. I am fairly certain uh, on the computer version, at least in the first edition, that I feel like I fought three guys sometimes. So let's see. We are fighting a hobgoblin. Look how cool that art is. Oh, see, and this guy has three hit points, so I still don't have a better weapon. Oh, maybe I could leave it up here. Okay, so here's the deal. 10 to hit, and we're rolling for 5. I think we're good. We just need a 5 or better. There's an 8, so we did 1 damage. I'll put the little markers up there. All right, and round 2. Uh, there, 9. That's going to hit, right? Now we're up to 2 damage on this guy, and we only need to hit him one more time. Wow, we're getting kind of lucky with our rolls because we're doing 2 dice. I like this. I'm not just getting wrecked. 9, right? So we hit him, we killed him. We're going to do our 3 damage. We never got hit, uh, so we're gonna gain two experience for this, so we're up to three total. Okay, and then we get a loot card, so let's go ahead and discard this. We get a loot card. Turn undead, how fun it be. <laughs> I just got rid of holy water, and that's essentially the same thing. Fantastic, okay. Well, that's, that's what we've got here. So we do have three experience. I could bump up my intellect a little bit. To level up vitality, it's five across the board. It's just down the line, it's five experience, right? So I, I could do that to level up some more. I feel like we're pretty powerful on that front, but I really need to get my combat strength higher because enemies are about to get a lot scarier. So I think for now, we just, we just move on. We go boom, boom to this little blue place here, and it says, ah, oh, didn't I like talk about this? Wounded dwarf. <laughs> 
One hero may discard garlic, loaf of bread, hunk of cheese, meaty rib, pint of ale, healing potion, or healing scroll. I don't think I have any of those things. No, I do not. Oh, man. Camping gear. That's it. I'm sorry, dwarf. You've, you've... I'm going to have to just sit there and watch you bleed out. I cannot help you because I got... I don't have. I never had any of those things, actually, right? Uh, oh, I had a loaf of bread, but I had to get it out of the maze. So unfortunately, this card goes away. I get nothing for it, and then we're done. So we can go boom, 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 and hit the hit the floor on the way out. Now we can stop here, and we can uh, rest up if we need to. But again, we are at full hit points because rolling two d10 is a whole lot easier than rolling one d10. Let me tell you. All right, so let's get rid of our cave in. Oh man, all right, so what's next up on the dungeon floor here? This this madness. Yeah, maybe I'm nuts. Maybe maybe it was a, a problem with level one stuff, uh, or first edition rather, where some of these things I could not tell. I feel like there's one typo in the game somewhere in here. There is a FAQ kind of a thing and a rata sheet on Board Game Geek uh, where they were talking about um, some of the cards uh, not having... No, one of the cards is like written poorly. There's something wrong with it. Like they use the wrong... The wrong word like it said like you have to roll above and you need below or something i don't remember what it is but maybe we'll find it together okay oh so we have new enemies right these are level three i promise all of these were shuffled ahead of time but uh i do like shuffling on camera but unfortunately there's too many cards i'd be here for 20 minutes messing around shuffling cards and talking which you know not like i didn't do that anyway Boom. All right, so let's go, <laughs> let's go uh, down in here. So right away, we can get into a combat. And in fact, with the stairs being down here, I think I am going to go clear up front, come down here, pop back over, and go down here. I love it. So we're going to go here. We're going to hit a red one immediately. So let's see what that card says. Encounter. Draw one monster and resolve combat. And look how cool these are. You know, there's a giant monster claw coming through this door here. So we have a level three monster here. Is a gargoyle. See, this guy already needs... Uh, more to hit, 11, right? And five hit points, and I don't have another weapon. I'm only doing one point of damage. And if I roll a six, we've got stone flesh. So that's not great. <sighs> so here's what we do. Here is what we do. We're going to blow fireball, okay? So this does not count as combat. This is ahead of time. I can discard that and do a d6 plus one damage right off the top just because I'm afraid of this guy. Uh, we need to get some weapons. I don't know. This is like zombie side all over again. I can't get any good weapons. D6 plus one. We did seven damage. We smoked the gargoyle. <laughs> it only has five hit points before combat even started. This is a standard. No, it's not. How funny. It is, but it's not correct. Because look, those should be on opposite sides. Oh, that's silly. Those should be on opposite sides. And the one and the six are correct. Oh, how funny. What a weirdly manufactured die. Okay, so we gain three experience points for that. Look at that. Look at us now. We're up to six experience. So perhaps I spend five of that. Yeah, yeah. Let's 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 take it down to just one experience just to gain one more in my strength. Uh, it just makes the rules easier for us, right? Uh, okay, and then a loot card. Yeah, yeah. All right, loot card. Here we come. Transmute rock to mud. That would have been great when I got a cave in on my head, right? So, oh, that could be used against the gargoyle that we just killed. <laughs> I've got a lot of spells in here for some reason. Okay, cool. So we've got one dead gargoyle here. And let's move on to this blue round one here. This game is exactly the dungeon crawling experience you want. Some... There seems to be an advantage knowing that they're, you know, like, what's in here. Like, like I, I knew that Wounded Dwarf card was in here, right? And there's not a lot of those cards, right? So let me show you. There's only, you know, this this many, right? There's there's five. One, two. Right. So you're going you're gonna to find the Wounded Dwarf every game. Oh, you're also going to find these guys every game. Sirens lure you into the dark abyss pass only if one hero discards a silence scroll, which I believe I do not have, a horn of blasting, or a loot. No, I've got nothing for it. So the problem is, is they took my cell sword, who was super helpful to me. That's too bad. So this guy wandered off. I mean, okay. Sorry, pal. We'll... we'll... 
Sacrifices must be made, my friend. All right, so I can't believe that. That was a terrible card. Okay, so uh, we go up here to the yellow one, and we have a new trap. This is a narrow ledge. All right, what have we here? Make an agility check to cross the narrow ledge. Pass if you have a rope or discard. Oh, that's interesting. If you have a rope, but you must discard the flying carpet. I don't think I've ever seen the flying carpet. I really don't. Um, I've always, uh, literally this is the first time this has been played, but I, I'm talking about on Steam. I've played it a, a little bit, and boy, howdy, does that mess you up, because the rules for, for, for second edition are a little different than, than first edition, so um, it plays very quickly, I'll say that, and you get beautiful, nice, high-res artwork on the cards. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Oh, I failed miserably. Okay, so we're going to take, oh, God. <sighs> Three damage? <laughs> Okay, so we're down to four hit points. Oh, jeez. I failed that miserably, and we're probably going to have to go buy that again, aren't we? Or we could just bail out on it, which I don't want to do. So we'll, we'll say that's an up. I don't know. I'm probably doing this wrong, but whatever. We know what it is. Okay, so now we're here. Oh, yeah, so here's an example. It's like, I think I have to do the purple before I can do the red. This is, this is right, but it is kind of in a large room. So what if I don't have to? Like, I don't know. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that everything is in front of for a reason and blocked for a reason so that I guess we have to do this purple card first so let's see what this is this uh ooh, yeah there's very few cards here weapon master you encounter a weapons master who wants to trade any hero may discard two loot cards or one treasure to take a weapon from the specialty deck or the discard you encounter a weapons master who wants to trade so so listen it doesn't say that like like how I get these cards though, right? It doesn't say that like I I I it just says I can kind of take it. If I trade two things, which I think I'm gonna have to here, right? So let's let's take a look and see if we can find like here's another sword, right? Now there's no limit to the number of swords I can carry. Um but let's look at what else we've got. Look at all this cool stuff, man. Charmed rats, charmed cobras, gem of seeing. Ah, this game is great. A skeleton. Uh I think the sorceress can make the skeleton. The Staff of Striking, right? We could take that. Charmed Cave or Lilith. Oh, my. Crossbow. Oh. Terrible. That moved a lot easier than I thought it would. Okay. Crossbow. Charmed Spider. Dagger. You can use by everybody. The Wise Men I didn't get. A Necromancer's Wand. Oh, that's that's cursed. Uh, and the Cell Sword. So we could take... Uh, let's take the Dagger, right? So So we're talking to these merchants... You encounter a weapons master who wants to trade. Any hero may discard two loot cards or one treasure to take a weapon from the specialty deck or discard. I don't see why it can't just be that. So now I have to give up two somethings. Um, I really don't want to give up my healing abilities. I don't want to give up my only defense. So I guess that kind of leaves me. So now, basically, this is telling me how much damage I'm going to do. So now I'm going to do two damage because I have two red here. And you can only do... If I had five red cards here, I would max out at three because of my lowest stats. So you can't just just like ignore a stat. So I have to keep pushing them all up. But I still have to pay. Let's get rid of... Uh, I, this is probably a terrible idea, but I'm going to get rid of these two loot cards. Transmute, Rock to Mud, and Turn Undead. And these are the fun decisions in this game right here. You know, what do I need more? Well, I was very unlucky this time. Uh, there have been games I've played in first edition on Steam uh, where I had like six weapons, right? It was amazing, right? But I died for other reasons because I probably couldn't even do max damage, right? I probably didn't have everything else up to a six. And... I, um, you know, maybe had low hit points because I ignored my HP, something like that. So there's there's other other things that could go wrong. I picked these up to fix them, and I ended up flipping out a, a, a loot card. So whatever it was, I put back in and shuffled them. Okay. So that was that. That was cool. That was our little purple guys, right? Our purple gem. So now I guess we... I guess you would have to fight. I don't know if you have to fight or not, but I'm going to fight. Let's go there. We'll put a little red gem there so we know we're, we're doing all the things... This says, guard barracks. Draw two monsters and, oh, here, draw two monsters and resolve combat. Okay, cool. So here is one, whatever the, oh my gosh, a hellhound. And here is two, a rust monster. So now, the way this works is, is we're only fighting them one at a time, but they, but they are, see, this is a 13 and this guy is an 11 now, right? So we probably want to fight, oh my gosh, the rust monster first. 
before we fight the Hellhound, right? So let's go ahead and here, we'll put him out here like this and we'll remember that that guy is at an 11. I need like a little marker for him to indicate, what did I do with my little, here, this guy's a little bit stronger, a little bit stronger, plus one. Okay, so they, so I don't have the plus one. Oh man, Whew. okay, so, um, right, so I only have a five, so I need to roll a, a, ideally a six or better. Ooh, what else can we do? Mm, just out of curiosity, I completely screw up here. No, do I have anything else I can do? It's not undead. It's a rust monster. What was the other one? The hellhound. The hellhound. I don't know. That doesn't sound too fun to me. All right. Well, we, I mean, we have no choice. We are doing two damage now, and it does have four hit points. So we just need two really good rolls. So let's 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 try to make that happen then. Here. So it's, it's at an eleven. Uh, okay, so we have, uh, let's say an 8 plus 5, yeah, 13, so we're going to hit, and we're going to do 2 points of damage because we now have 2 red uh, weapons here. So boom, and we're going to do that again, so maybe this guy is not as hard as I thought. Uh, famous last words though, okay, ooh, 6, oh, okay, so here's the deal. So 6 plus 5 is going to match their 11, so what happens now? We both hit. If I still had a luck uh, stone here, right? I could I could uh, roll that six to a seven and be good, uh, but I I don't have that now. On top of that, rust armor happens on a five, so we're 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 this this five didn't happen here, right? There's special ability of rust armor, which uh, do I have? Is this it? Rust armor? Are you on here somewhere? These might just be. Oh no, those are like clarifications on cards. Rust armor might be, oh, I thought I had a button for it. Maybe not. Right here, rust armor. Hero must discard one armor or weapon. That's a bummer, right? So we don't have to worry about that. Now playing on expert mode, which I believe is probably the best way to play this game. But again, this is my first game. Uh, you know, that's that, that would be a very real fear, right? You would want to hang on to those luck counters. Uh, so in any case, it's going to hit me for three damage and then I am going to hit and kill it. So we have some options here. Now we could uh, block all the damage by using shield, which is gonna reduce uh, any damage by four health. Now I only have four health, so let's go ahead and chuck our shield so that we do not die right away. Uh, and then we're gonna kill it, of course. Now the plus one does not transfer over because there's only one enemy left. They only get the pluses for you know multiple multiple guys. However, we do gain all of our stuff now. So we just gained three experience, so we're up to four, and a loot card. That does happen right this second. There's our torch, but we're probably not gonna see bats again. Discard, <laughs> I love it, to kill mummy. That's awesome, okay. So now what? Uh, so this thing is just a straight up 12. No, 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 no. Oh no. Um, hmm. So this was this was bad, right? This was this was really bad. Now we did push up to five on our main stat. We have blessed here. Do not discard add plus one to camping gear rolls and gain plus one health when using a potion of healing, a healing scroll, mini rib, loaf of bread, garlic, hunk of cheese, or pint of ale. This cannot be traded. So, so we are favored. Our crusader here, she is favored. We just got this because we are that awesome. So we got to remember that we get plus one basically on our on our heels. It looks like plus one to camping gear rolls and gain plus one health when using other things. Uh, we can't use hand of god yet. We need to be up to seven, which we don't have, and turn undead. Apparently this thing is not undead so let's uh i want to keep blessed handy just so that we remember we have it oh man i don't have anything that can just do some damage for me right ouch that's a bummer well we're just gonna have to uh to roll we're just gonna have to roll let's go ahead and what do we need a, a five seven we need a seven or better oh no oh there's a 10 okay good so there's two damage on it right so there's that Oh, it's supposed to be a two, so we'll do that. All right, here it goes. Yeah, let's do this. Let's get this guy dead. Seven. So seven plus my five is 12. It's going to hit me, but I'm going to hit and kill it. Uh, we didn't have a six, which is good. Uh, so we're going to go ahead. Yeah, I don't have, I can't pull a plus one out of nowhere, anywhere, right? Also, one thing I haven't mentioned yet, and I probably should have at some point, some items have abilities. Spend one luck to inflict one damage. You can just do that. Um, I don't have any luck tokens, so I've kind of ignored it. But yeah, that's a, that's a really cool little thing now. Let me switch the order of these around so I can at least do that. Okay, so we're going to take 
two damage here, right? So we're going to go from four down to two hit points. And this guy, though, is dead, which is great because it's going to give us three experience points. So we're at four right now. So here, I'm going to put a four in here and take this one out. We have seven over there. I need eight to level up my strength again. Oh, man. Uh, but we also get a loot card for this guy, right? Yes. So we're going to go ahead and take... Ooh. The Gauntlet of Power. Discard to reduce damage taken by three health. And it's a strength weapon, so now... Now we are doing three damage in combat, uh, but now we have to level up our um, intelligence if we want to go beyond three. So I actually may as well spend this three experience right now just to just to bump it up. Plus, there's going to be checks that we need to make in here still, but I really need to focus on getting this higher. I've been completely neglecting my hit points. We're not doing as well as, as, I, as I feel like we should be, but it doesn't matter. I'm having a good time going through this dungeon. So we're going to go through here. Uh, we bet go back to the narrow ledge. It is persistent. We need a what? A, a four or less. We got nowhere near that. So again, we're going to take three down. Oh, did we just die? I guess I can't do that because we'll die. So yes, <laughs> I would have died, but you know, knowing that I had no hit points, let's say in the room prior here, uh, we we know we're gonna fail this roll, but let's 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 fudge it here and pretend that we use the camping gear. We haven't done it yet, so I'm gonna roll a d6. All heroes gain roll plus one health. Okay, so we got a four, right? If not at a stair, we're not, and the roll is below the dungeon level, it's not. Draw a monster, right? So we rolled above the dungeon level, which is good. And it's a roll plus two for us, right? Do not discard at a plus one to camping gear rolls. That's a camping gear roll. So we just gained six hit points. Uh, well, we have two, so we, we max out at seven anyway. So let's go ahead and take our maximum hit points. All right, there we go. This can go back in here, I suppose. Uh, well, probably not, right? This is probably out of the game now. I don't think it just gets shuffled back in. Uh, six, seven... Okay, so then, then we come here, we failed that roll, and we just took three damage, so we're back down to four hit points. And now we go here, 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 another trap room. Great. Gelatinous cube, out of nowhere, you are ambushed by a giant blob. Make a strength check, pass if you have a rope, or discard a flying carpet. I have neither of those things. So now we need a, we have a 50-50 shot. Uh, just barely, we have a five. So we pass the strength check. Man, okay, so we pass gain two experience. Okay, so we're going to gain two experience. That gives me six experience total. Uh, where's a two? Here's a two. Dang. Okay, but it's persistent. So we got to remember that this jerk stays there. And I need a yellow thing here. Let's see, it's facing to the right. Okay. Dang, because there's a little green gem room right behind it here. So our little green gem rooms are what now? Uh, green square, boon or beneficial? So, of course, we're going to want to check that out. So let's come down here. Those must be the best runes, right? Magic of Mouth. The wall begins to speak in riddles. Draw a loot card and place it face up on this room. You may place a loot card on this room to make an intelligence check. You may make any number of these wagers. Pass. Take all the loot cards on this room. Wait, what now? Draw a loot card and place it face... Okay, so draw a loot card... And place it face up on this room, so it's whatever this... Oh no, this can't be in here. That's another one of those same cards I pulled before, so we drew this thing. Um, that, it, it's got that little symbol in the corner for the other, the bigger... I didn't realize they were mixed in here. Uh, draw a loot card and place it face up on this room. You may place a loot card in this room to make an intelligence check to take everything. So let's put a torch in here, and then now we get to make an intelligence check to take them both. And my intelligence is only four. One and a ten, how funny. So we're going to go with the one, I suppose, and we get to take it all. Now, that weapon we cannot use. Discard to apply, but we can use the ability on it, though, right? Like, we can't use it for attacking because it's got the little green agility symbol. We're not a green agility hero. Discard to apply negative one monster attack value for one combat round and or increase a combat roll by plus one. So it still has its uses for us. Uh, okay, magic mouth. See, it's good to know that these things are all in there, right? All right, so moving along, we go back here and have to make a strength check against the gelatinous cube again. It's only a five, huh? Two and four, we pass. We're going to go here, and there's a combat spot right here. Okay, what do we got? We have encounter. Draw one monster and resolve combat. 
feel like we've done a lot of combat. A ghoul, oh, look. And they regenerate, and they suck, and guess who's an undead killing machine? Oh, I actually don't have all my fancy stuff anymore, do I? No, I got rid of it all. <laughs> Turn undead, uh, holy water, all gone, all gone. <laughs> um, dang. Uh, but we still have this turn undead. We we have our like built-in ability turn undead, which which is another great thing about second edition is you can you can use this and there's a way to refresh it. I think when you're camping or resting, you can spend experience to to like uh like untap it essentially, right? Uh, four experience though, so I don't know. That's kind of nice for us. That gets us three. Let's go ahead and cast turn undead. So discard to inflict a d6 plus one damage to zombie skeleton shadow white. Uh, yeah, ghouls on there. Okay, so this is this is our ability. This is just we got that when we started the game, and I've just not used it yet. But I would love to to kill this guy right away. Look at that. We did six points of damage, right? I rolled a five. We got a plus one on that, so we killed the ghoul right away. But we did spend our turn undead ability, so I'm gonna flip that face down and just kind of sneak it back there. Yeah, I really don't actually remember how it works now. Um, it's on I think page six in the book which I might not have cut out here to read combat. No, I probably don't. I probably don't. I think it's on page six in the book. I mean, everything is going to be on six or seven here. Somewhere in here. Char Let's see here. Yeah. Uh, nope. Charming teleportation in the game. Let's see. Trading henchmen. It's in here somewhere. Resolution phase. Rest phase. See, you see. During the opportunity to camp or repurchase discarded skills after the rest phase, yeah, uh, or repurchase discarded skills, right. So so now I can do it. You don't have to be on the actual stairs, but that's okay. Uh, we don't need it just right this second, I don't think, anyway. Uh, what did we get here? So we killed this guy. We're going to gain three experience points. One, two, three, and we are going to gain a loot. The Book of Spells. So what is that? Just a weapon discard to take one scroll from the discard. <gasps> so... That doesn't do me any good as a weapon because I am not an intelligence user, right? So we can discard this right off the bat to take any one scroll from the discard. I really like Fireball. I really like Fireball. Okay, so we're going to take Fireball back. That's a great, great thing to have. Okay, and we also have now, what, six, nine experience? And if I spend all but one, we can go to... A six on our strength. Yes, us. And we're doing three damage now with a, with this regular swing, so I think that we're getting a little better here. Let's go here to the another trap. Ooh, what is this guy? The troll bridge, huh? Okay, so five. he regens on a five and a six. A troll demands a toll to cross. One hero must discard a loot card or you must fight the troll. Oh, man. All right, let's fight the troll. I'm not discarding any loot. That's not, not an option. Uh, we don't have enough. This guy has six hit points. We need a 12, and I have, what, a six? So we got to roll a, ideally, a seven or better. Well, you know what? Maybe we just use our fireball scroll again and, and even the odds a little bit, right? If I can get this guy down to three hit points, we're in good shape. Uh, oh, that only did two damage. Wow. Well, easy come, easy go, I guess, right? Uh, because now I have to do two rounds of combat against this guy. So let's go ahead and... Let's, let's just see what happens. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So a six and a six. Ooh, that's real not good. <laughs> it's really bad, actually. So a six and a six. Uh, so I rolled a six, and I have a six. That gives me 12. But we'll notice two things about that. Number one, that means he hits me for three points of damage, and he regens on that. And I have no way to change uh, here. Right, if I discard the flail to make it a seven, we don't have to worry about that, right? Discard the flail to apply negative one math for one combat round and or increase a combat roll by plus one. Well, I'm going to increase the combat roll by plus one. So we have a, rolled a seven. The idea behind that is to avoid the regen. So we're going to hit and do three points of damage there. So he's down to one hit point. So I really need to roll well this time uh there the eight gets it done okay so the eight plus the six is going to be well over that 12 right that's going to give us 14 we killed the troll <laughs> take my loot buddy i'm going to take your loot and your four experience points that guy was over four let's go ahead and take four so we have five experience points here so hmm. <sighs> dang let's go ahead and spend all five 
to level up our, our vitality to eight. Okay, so this guy's dead. Oh, we get a loot. Well, that goes up here. That guy was a nasty boy. All right, what is that? That is just some treasure. Counts as two loot cards for trading. I like that system too, right? You're, you're, you're trading stuff you found with people in the dungeon. You're not just like, oh, here's a whole sack of gold, right? I don't, I don't like that nearly as much. That was a trap. That wasn't even a combat. And then last but not least, we have this room here. Deal with the devil. Draw a loot card and either keep it or discard it. If you choose to keep the loot card, you must pay a D6 minus one XP or health. Oh my goodness. A breastplate. Discard to reduce damage taken by three health. So we don't have any more armor, so this is actually kind of nice. If we keep it, a D6 minus one XP or health. So I can't pay an XP and the health would kill me. So I guess we're just gonna have to pass on the deal. That's, <laughs> that's a crazy card. Okay, and then we are out of here. Now we're on the steps, okay? So I wanna do this right so that we can all see how this game works. So we're on the stairs. So now we know that we're going into the fourth floor. So we're gonna go ahead and we are going to dump a camping gear, right? To roll the D6, and for us, I guess it's plus two uh, because we're blessed, right? And we don't, have... great, so I gained three hit points. All I needed was a two or better. <laughs> Three, four, five, six, seven. Our max is eight. Okay, so we healed. Now, I could use another one, but I'm not going to. We didn't get attacked because we're on the stairs. That's how that works, right? So now we're going to go down to level four. Oh, man. This is so cool. This is a lot of fun. This is just straightforward dungeon crawling. Uh, so that was level three, I guess. This is, yeah, there's only two left. Here's level four. Man, we are not making the progress I thought I'd be making. That is for sure. It slowed down a lot this last time, I feel like. All right, two yellow ones. What else do we have? We're going to start here. There, we need to get some more, some new enemies in here. We did do a lot of combat there, though. All right, that was four guys. We used a lot of our equipment. And see, that's the kind of thing that happens, right, is I run out of gear and I get smoked. And so we're, we're not doing well with our traps because we're failing due to low ability scores on knowledge or intellect or whatever it's called and agility uh strength i feel like we have a better handle on it now but uh still not 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 cruising through the dungeon so let's see here we have a combat right out of the gate look at that we have a combat right out of the gate i just realized do some of these have and maybe i didn't notice before oh it is <laughs> I guess not that it matters technically, but I just realized that's the little temple symbol. So maybe, is it, no, that, see that's dungeon on both sides. This is temple, temple and dungeon on this side. So maybe we have to flip this around. Oh, I wonder if I've been messing that up too. I don't, I don't actually think it matters. I really don't. I really, I do not think that it matters. I, I don't care. Let's, let's, let's just keep going the way we're going. All right, here we are. Because the distribution of stuff is all the same. They're just random. And I, I think that, like, oh, my God. I mean, they're really tiny icons. That little tiny thing right there. I've never even noticed them on the cards until just now. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's interesting. I guess, I guess you could pay attention to that. But it's kind of not great that it's not just one side or the other. It'd be a whole lot better if... Once, I mean, that they're that small, I'm having a hard time seeing them. So maybe, well, wait a minute, that one is, that one is. Did I just pull one and not be able to see it clearly enough? Oh, maybe they are. Maybe they are all, let's see, dungeon. Did I just grab one and not be able to see it? Dungeon. Maybe, I, no, this one, this card, that's a dungeon. D13, and that's a dungeon, right? Yeah, D14, yeah, so I don't know. I don't think it matters all that much. We're, we're playing a mixed dungeon environment here. How's that? A temple mixed with the, the sewers or whatever. <laughs> all right, that's the way I shuffle them up. I don't care what it looks like. I'm not looking at these graphics anyway. I'm looking at the colors of the gems, so here we go. We're going to go to our first combat room, the red one right here, and see what this says. Encounter, draw one monster and resolve combat. So now we're up to a level four monster, a water elemental. I have a torch, can I just shove it in him and turn him to steam and get rid of it? This guy has 10 hit points, drown or absorb attack. <gasps> I think we're gonna die. And see how much harder this guy is? It's gonna take four rounds of combat. And he's a 12 and I only have a six. 
So here goes nothing. I'm gonna need to roll ideally a seven or better. So there's a nine, so we're gonna go ahead and do three damage there. Well, I actually need the higher number to damage things. Okay, let's let's keep up that momentum, right? Let's let's get this done. No fives and no sixes. Ooh. So our best roll here is a five, which we have to take, and the five is drown. So what is drown? Drown is hero loses one health per armor or treasure they have. Well, it looks like I'm gonna lose. I only have one treasure and no armor. These are weapons, not armor. So I, I just I take a damage for that, but then it also hits me for two more. Oh no! Dang. Okay. Well, here we go. I'm down to four hit points. Ten. There we go. So there's three more damage on it. I like it. Uh, three. Boy, I would kill for one more point of damage. And notice how we never got any more luck. Uh-oh, so we got a four this time uh, as our highest roll. So that four means that I only got a 10 on my attack, which means it hits me for two damage, bringing us down to two hit points. Oh, this could be it. I have no way to like heal myself out of this. I really don't think I do. Well, I have one option. I have a shield. Oh, come on. We got to roll really high. That was not it. So Drown is going to do, again, one damage. That's, like, unblockable. And then for an attack, we have the Gauntlet of Power. It says discard uh, to reduce damage taken by three health. So I'm going to get rid of my weapon, which then, again, lowers my attacking prowess. Oh, no. <laughs> Next round. Let's see, I've got a 9, so I'm at a 9 plus 6 is 15, so we're going to hit for only 2 damage now. So 6, 7, 8. Now I need to do that one more time to win, and then we need to heal up. I can't believe how strong this guy is. We failed. Uh, so, uh, the 2, it's going to hit me, but I'm going to cast Shield, which says discard to block any damage. Okay. This is it. It comes down to this last roll. I am out of options, I believe. Two eights, plus sixes, fourteens, we killed it just barely. Wow, that guy was no joke. We only get four experience for it, uh, and we're almost dead, just like that. Yeah, so we don't really have a choice. We never found any healing stuff. We're going to have to use our camping gear, and we're just going to, we, we, we need to roll, oh God, we got to roll high or we get jumped. Uh, so three, four, so we're going to heal five, but we did get jumped. Oh, man. <laughs> well, because it was below the dungeon level. So what jumped us? Medusa. Why couldn't it be a mummy and I just throw my torch at it and be done with it? I don't have like a mirror. In fact, I have nothing but a torch. I'm out of food. See, we're going downhill fast. All right, Medusa with her three. What do we got? 12 to hit. So again, I need a six or better. And I'm looking for a real high. Oh, there's a 10. So we hit her for two. Okay, <laughs> this is this is very bad. This is this is not a good situation. Oh, there's a four plus six is a ten, so she hits me. That four was not a spell of hers. Her spells are fives and sixes. Oh, she hit me for four damage. Wow. Um. Wow. I don't have anything but to just eat the four damage. Oh, we're gonna die on the fourth floor in the first combat room. I can't believe it. There's a seven plus my six is 13, so we hit for two. What do we got? She has oh, five hit points, of course, so I need one more damage on her, and I have no way to do it, right? Uh, I do have spend one luck token to inflict one damage, but I don't have any luck tokens. I, 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 can't you buy them? Aren't they like five experience? I think you can buy them, but I don't have that. I have four experience. And, oh, double tens. Okay, so the fate was with us there. We did kill Medusa. Uh, we're going to gain a loot. The Breastplate of Vitality. Oh, did I never gain? I gained loot. Uh, I didn't take loot for this guy. And a potion of luck. Oh, how funny. <laughs> uh, I was just whining about not having any luck. So the Breastplate of Vitality. Oh, hold on. I can't forget my experience either. So we're at eight experience points. Okay, Breastplate of Vitality. Immediately gain one vitality. Uh, strictly once per game, discard to reduce damage taken by three health. So at some point, I can I can 
I can use that to absorb some more damage, which is good. Uh, then I have a potion of luck. Discard this to gain two luck. So here, I'm going to take those two luck tokens. Now, we have no way to heal ourselves. This just got really bad really fast. Let's go here to this blue room in the center. Dark room. You wander into what seems like an endless dark room with shelves and piles of debris. Any hero may discard a torch or light scroll to draw two loot cards. <gasps> we have a torch. <laughs> yes, to draw two loots. We have a helmet. Discard to reduce damage taken by two. And a lucky shield. Oh, we just went from no armor to a breastplate, a helmet, and a shield. That's amazing. Immediately gain one luck. Look at that. Strict once per game. Discard to reduce damage taken by four health. So we have a two, a three, and a four here. Nice, because we don't have any more hit points. Now our problem is, is if we wind up in a situation where we are having to make a skill check, say, uh, and we fail it, this that doesn't count, right? That's not gonna that's not gonna count for what we need. We need to get some of these again, but we don't have any. I'm gonna, I don't like where they are, so there we go. Okay. Dang it. Um Wow. Okay. Let's let's move on. And the reason why I'm moving slowly through this and hitting every room is I need to gain experience. So let's go to this little trap, this yellow one right here. Oh no. What is that? A spider's web. It's persistent, of course. You get caught in a spider's web. Make a strength check. Discard an armor, treasure, or potion. Oh man. Okay. Strength check coming up. Uh, I rolled well below my strength, so we're good. Okay, so we gain two experience for succeeding, but it is a persistent thing, and we do not get to do the experience again. It's only only once per game. Okay, let's go, I guess, over to this little white gem here. A guild merchant. What do you have, sir? If you choose to trade, draw five loot cards. I like it. I need to get some healing. And place them face up on this room. You may discard two loot cards or one treasure card to take any one of the loot cards on this room any number of times. Afterwards, discard the remaining loot cards on this room. So let's go ahead and draw just five. One, two, three, four, five. And again, if I have screwed up and I'm using a temple card, no, 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 they're not. Ooh, okay. So... I like all of these. What is the mace? In discard to inflict one damage and increase a combat roll by one. Discard to inflict one damage and increase a combat roll by one. So it doesn't matter why. I like the axe way more. So we're gonna we're gonna buy the axe for the silver coffer. How's that? I'm gonna trade you the two uh, for the one. This is essentially counts as two, and so we're back up to three damage, which we need. We need to get our damage way higher than it is. Uh, so that brings me to, do we? Do do we how how could we make this work? What could we do? We could get this mace if we give up all that sweet sweet armor. I don't know if that's worth it. I don't think that that's worth it. That's a bummer, uh, especially because now they're in the discard. But that's that's all I could afford. I just didn't have any other stuff. Okay, let's go on to a combat down here with red. Boy, the enemies here are brutal on floor four. The Monster Bash. You encounter monsters feuding. Before they see you, you are able to make a sneak attack. Draw two... What the heck? Draw two monsters. A griffin. And a giant. Look how cool that is. A griffin and a giant. So the giant has seven hit points. Draw two. One hero may inflict their weapon damage to a monster. Resolve combat. So I get to... I get, I basically, I get to attack first. Okay. I gotcha. Uh... I guess I attack the giant first, yeah? So we're going to do three damage just right out of the gate. Boom. And then we are going to... So he has a 12, because remember, he's with a guy. So he has a 12. Dang it. 8 plus 6 is 14. Thank goodness. We're going to do three more damage. Takes us up to six damage total. Uh, and here, you know, I think what we're going to do is I have a sword that says spend one luck token to inflict one damage. I'm going to spend one luck token. We're going to kill this guy. He has seven hit points. He's dead. Gone. Giant. We are going to gain a loot. And oh, it's a pearl necklace. And four, I would have loved to have had that a minute ago. And four more experience points. If I can find it. There we go. We'll just take two twos. Okay. 
So that's a dead giant. But now we have to deal with a griffin. However, before we do that, we can spend our experience if we want to, and I think that's probably a good idea. I have a 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That'll leave me with 2, but we can level up our strength once more. Just, just, just because these guys are getting very difficult to fight, right? So this time we need a 13, but we're at a plus 7, right? So again, we need to roll really well. So 7 plus 7 is 14. We have barely done it. <laughs> Whew. Okay. All right. So hopefully I didn't f screw up my giant attacks. I don't remember what I rolled for. Well, one hit was, I only rolled one attack. I don't think it was a five or a six. This was a seven plus seven is 14. Their abilities are on a five and a six. So we're going to go ahead and do three points of damage. And we just need to do that one more time. I think we can pull that off. Eight plus seven. There it is. There's our 15. That is a dead griffin. Whew. Okay, uh, that's again going to get us, what now, four experience points, and one more loot card. Oh, discard to kill a Medusa. <laughs> and gain an additional two, or discard to inflict two damage. Oh, wow. So I presume that the Medusa that we just fought is probably the only one in the entire game. Dang. Dang. Okay, so now let's go up to whatever this thing is here. The little, I like those green ones. Let's go here. We have a locked door. Dang it. A large, we don't have a key. One hero may make a strength check. Pass if you discard a lockpick or skeleton key. All heroes draw one loot card and gain two XP. Strength check coming up. I've got a seven. We got a good chance of beating this. Yes, we did it. Okay, so what do we gain? Two experience points. I love it. And that puts us at eight. And what now? A one loot card. The Wand of Lightning. Discard to inflict one damage to all monsters in combat. That's pretty sweet. Oh, speaking of which, one thing that we did get, we, we got level 7 here, so we just unlocked the Hand of God. Discard to redirect damage from any monster attack back onto that monster. <sighs> I love it. Okay, cool. Let's carry on. Let's go down here to a trap. This is where we could die, is on this trap here, right? So we're on a yellow trap card. Oh, what the heck? The Lake of Fire, a ferryman, offers to take you across for a fair. Fail unless one hero discards a loot card. If you discard a flying carpet, gain three and discard this room. Fail, all heroes take a d6 minus one damage. So I can't, I only have two hit points. I mean, we, we need a way to heal. I don't have it. I'm trying to do anything I can to get these loot cards to find a healing potion, and they're just not happening. So... Let's delete a loot card here. So I guess Magic Mirror goes away, or discard, rather. That is a loot card, right? Um, okay, that's a bummer, but yeah, here, take my... my Take my charms, Ferryman. All right, we'll go to the purple room. Uh, and then, what did that say? Oh, nothing. If you discard a fine carpet... Oh, wow, you can get experience if you do that one. Okay, so there's, there's that. Well, I'll remember where they are, because I'm not going back there. Purple room... So I wonder, there's only five of these in the whole game, so you should know what they are. What is this now? You attempt to uh, free a magical sword stuck in a stone, make a strength check. You know I can. Pass if you discard a transmute rock to mud. See, I love how everything, like we have seen these cards. I love it. Uh, I rolled a one, so I definitely passed. And a six, which is also a pass. Pass. Take a weapon from the specialty deck or discard. Ooh, let's just take our, uh, our mace. Why not? Right? So that's one, two, three, four damage, and we're at four, so yeah, we've got a little bit more strength to us now. Sword in the stone, I love it. How awesome. How about some healing? Uh, okay, let's move on to, this is, oh, the final combat on floor four is going to be right here. This says, encounter, draw one monster and resolve combat. An ogre with seven hit points. That's okay. We only need two rounds to smoke this fool. We don't have the tankard or whatever it is there. Uh, and then on a five and a six, he does some horrible, nasty stuff to me. Berserk and evade. Neither one of those sounds good. Let's roll well. Uh, 14, is that good enough? Yes, it is. So there is three, four damage now I'm doing? Yes. So there's four. Uh, nothing happens on a seven. Okay, and let's just pull this off one more time. I'll take another seven, please. Ooh, a nine's even better. There we go. So nine plus seven is going to give us a 16. Man, life was easier, easier when we had our little guy helping us out. Okay, 
So there's there must be a lot more strategy to this game than I'm realizing if you know what the cards are, right? Because you know you wouldn't knowing that you could lose your your helper guy if you go to one of those blue rooms, you know, might not be so swift. Uh, and then a loot. Oh, healing. Discard and choose any hero to gain a D6 plus one health. Oh, we're going to use this right now. Because, I mean, we only have two hit points. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Five. So I think it's seven, actually, right? Do not discard. Ask plus one to camping gear. Plus one health when using. Potion of healing. Healing scroll. And this is already a plus one. So that's a seven. So that's going to max us out anyway, because our max is nine. So look at that. So there's five, six, seven. Can I find a two somewhere? There we go. Hey, much better. Now I need that magic book to take that back. <laughs> and we're going to go to the stairs. We don't have any camping gear. We are into the last floor now. All right. Well, what do we think, adventurers? Okay, so this, oh, I already got rid of it. These are gone. These are yellows. So what do we have left here? These are all gone. Oh, man. So now the question, oh, here, is there another Medusa in here? No, it's just that one. Wow. Okay, so the deal now is... There's my stairs right there. So the deal now is that do we just try to rush for the door? Although looking at this map, there's no no such thing. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, okay, so here's what's going to happen. We're going to put these off to the side. We're going to take level five enemies because we need as many hit points as possible once you know we hit the stairs here because we want to get to the boss, right? So let's... I mean, obviously, we want to get to the boss. I want to get to the boss with as much hit points as possible, and I think that is just right now. So unless we get lucky with some more healing, I don't know if that's going to happen. So, um, But you know what? Let's just let's just see what, what, what happens here. So we're going to go here to a yellow one. Oh, no. You attempt to open a treasure chest, make an intelligence check, fail, take damage equal to the dungeon level, and that's five damage now. I can't let that happen. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to spend five experience points to level that up to there. Uh, and then, whew, yeah, right? Uh, we have four, five, six, seven. I can't quite get it any higher. We really need to not fail this. Okay, intelligence check out of five. Oh, we got it. Okay, good, 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 good. Um, I actually think that you can level up after the roll too, by the way. Uh, take it. The book literally says, you know, at any time you can level up. Uh, so we did not a pass. Draw one loot card. That's me. Boots of agility. Immediately gain one agility. Strictly once per game. I like these. Look at that. Just free stats. Uh, discard to reduce damage taken by one health. Okay. Uh, draw one loot card. Gain two experience. And then discard this room during the rest phase. So we gained two experience for that. Okay. Uh, and then this one is gone now, so we actually do not have this treasure mimic anymore. I like that. I like these treasure rooms that go, or treasure rooms, trap rooms that go away. Uh, so let's go here and we'll do a combat red on a level five. Let's just see. Oh, wait a minute. We can go to the green. What is the green room? Boon or beneficial? Let's go there first. I like things that benefit me. They help greatly. So let's, <laughs> let's go there. Uh, interesting to note that there are some extras, right? So I don't know. Okay. A treasure room. You find a room filled with treasure. All heroes draw two loot cards. Boom. Gauntlets are discard to reduce damage taken by one health. Speed. Discard to gain two hero attack value for one combat round or discard to inflict additional weapon damage on a successful combat roll. <gasps> that's, that's sick. That's mighty. That's what that is. Holy cow. Okay. Uh, what do I got here? I have four. I have nine experience. Man, I don't know. Okay, let's go ahead and do the combat now. So we'll come down here to this red room. The red room says, encounter, draw one monster and resolve combat. Um, you know, this is probably going to be bad. A soul gazer with paralyze and curse and fear and sleep. Wow. And you know what I don't have is a... Oh my gosh. And it's a 15... And you know what I don't have is a, um, uh, 
like a fireball, you know, like some some kind of way to just just hurt it. So 15. Oh my god. Okay, so I have to roll an eight. Eight plus seven. Holy cow. <laughs> so I rolled an eight. Let's use one luck token to make it a nine so that it's nine plus seven is 16. So I don't get hit. I only do four points of damage, but if I discard speed, I do eight points of damage. I know it's, I mean, probably best to save it for the boss, but I, that's a hard roll and I don't know what the bosses look like. I'm just gonna be happy if we get to a boss. That guy gave me five experience and one loot. Yeah, Crystal Ball, discard to rearrange the top five cards of any deck. Well then, let's let's just pack that away. That seems handy. <laughs> um, okay, so now let's carry on to this room here. So it's the uh, white rectangle, trading and exchanges. So we're gonna go here. See, this could be our last hurrah at, at getting anything, which is which is. Uh, Let's draw the card and see what it says. First of all, Sacred Temple. You may discard a loot card and roll a d6. If a treasure dis is discarded, add plus two to the roll. Okay, so I can discard a pearl necklace to add plus two to this roll. Okay, discard it. Now, roll a d6. And it's, a, it's a d6 plus two. Draw three loot cards. Oh, yeah, we need, we need a six. Or at least a four. Yes, that's a six. Right, because we're at plus two, so draw three loot cards and keep two. Now, we use our crystal ball, or do we? Let's use our crystal ball, and we'll just peel off the top five, three, four, because I can rearrange these now, right? But I only get to keep the first two, so let's see what we've got here. So there is, see, there's, see, this is what I want, a potion of healing and maybe a plus one vitality, right? Or... Um, so I, I'm going to put these on the bottom, the torch and the staff of striking. We'll just we'll just say they're on the bottom, because I can rearrange these however I want. This could be really good. Helm of intellect seems good too, right? Gain plus one intellect, boom, and then discard for two damage later. <sighs> Maybe we'll do it like that. Somebody remind me. Oh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. That's not what I want to do. I have to do what now? Draw three and keep. Okay, so I can rearrange these. So I'm going to do it like this, right? I'm going to rearrange the top five cards as such, thanks to the crystal ball. Then we're gonna peel off three cards. One, two, three, and I get to keep two. So I'm gonna discard the torch and keep these two. This says Helm of Intellect is uh, gain one intellect just for having it, and it's another. Now look at all of our armor here. Boom, <laughs> I love it. And no, it doesn't have to make sense. And I love that about this game too. It doesn't matter. I don't have to have only one uh, helmet. Okay, so let's come back out. This was the Mimic, and it's dead. So we're going to go here to another combat. And then we have two traps and another combat to get through. Yikes. But we got a healing potion. We got a bunch of armor. I'd love to have a little bit more uh, weaponry here, though. I'll tell you that. Uh, so what does this say? Encounter. Draw one monster and resolve combat. Basilisk. Oh, my God. And we don't have that stone to mud thing which would be fabulous right now 13 these guys are so hard nine hit points oh god okay so let's uh let's do it i need a what now a six to tie i've got an eight Ooh, i've got it so i've got an eight plus my seven is 15 so i'm gonna hit you for what only four we're only doing four it's the best you got all right second round Ooh, that was bad. That was really bad. Um, let's dump a luck token to reroll. I don't like either one of those. And watch this reroll be even worse. <laughs> well, on the upside, nothing bad happens on a two or a four, so I didn't go insane or whatever, but it does hit me for four. However, However, if it hits me for four, I can discard a lucky shield to reduce my four damage. So there's there's that gone. Wow, no wonder the loot cards are so like mighty. These stacks are gin ginormous because I have churned through all of these guys. Like I did not think I would go through that much treasure, but like that's the most fun part after killing stuff, taking their stuff. Okay, next round. God, 
I need to get out of this dungeon. I still have a fight after this guy, if I can even live. Uh-oh, what is that, 13? That's a tie. Dang it. Okay, so I'm going to hit it for four. Right, one, two, three, four red cards. Yes, okay, but then it's going to attack me for four as well, unless I can discard four damage with the stuff somehow. So here is uh, two, three, and four. So there goes there goes three of my armors. And I'm down to a two and a three defense. Uh, then, oh no, I don't have it. I was going to say I was going to use my uh, lucky token here to do one point of damage, but I don't have it. So instead, discard to inflict one damage to all monsters in combat. I'm going to discard the Wand of Lightning just to kill this guy. I can't believe I have to do that. But I'm getting smoked. So that's five experience. I lost track of how much experience I have now. And then one loot card. And we have a potion of vitality. Who would have thought? Uh, so we're going to take that potion of vitality and drink it. Discard to gain one vitality. So boom. And one more hit point for me. So we are at ten now. So that's awesome. We are maxed out. Okay. So we're going to go on to yellow here. This will be a trapped room. Trap door. Make an intelligence check. If any hero dis uh, pass, if any hero discards a rope. I never saw a rope in all this mess. Fail. Draw one monster per fail and resolve combat. Monsters gain plus one attack value. Oh my goodness. This is an intelligence check. My intelligence is six. Let's see. Let's see. What do we got here? We can we can pass this with a three. Look at that. Okay, so gain two experience. Now, we need to spend some of our experience here because I'm just sitting on all this experience here. Uh, okay, so it's a trap door that is not persistent. What? Why did I get all the persistent ones, like, immediately? Okay, so now we know we're coming up on some nasty business here, right? So let's go ahead and spend... Do I have 16? I have 5, 10, 14, 15, 16. That's going to push that a little bit higher. That leaves me 5. I would like to see at least eight here at some point. So let's move on. We're going to go to this little blue round one here. That is the last card. Oh, these are the ones that could be good, could be bad. Gold deposits. If your hero has a pickaxe, a battle axe, I have a battle axe, halberd or horn of blasting, take a bag of gold from the specialty deck. So the bag of gold sounds to me, yeah, exactly. It's just going to be a treasure, right? It counts as two cards uh, for trading on... Uh, a trader, but we're not going to have any more trading. Right? We're not going to have any more trading. Right? 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 Oh, it was a sacred temple back here. That's right. Okay. Uh, so now we go on to the final trapped room in this place. There's even one more. The room begins to fill with poison gas. Make a vitality minus two check. Oh, dear. Is it persistent? Of course it is. Okay. So vitality minus two. So my vitality is ten. Minus two is eight. I rolled a 1 and an 8, so we pass, gain 2 experience. Oh, I'm too shy, aren't I? I am too experience shy of what I want, right? I have 7. Dang it. Okay. Dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. What's this last trap that we're not going to see? I kind of just want to know. A trapped chest that explodes. Okay, so then we go to this purple room. So this is the last purple card in the game. Pit. Oh, spikes, huh? Let's see what that says. Pit of spikes. Oh, that's small. Make two agility checks. Pass both checks if you discard a flying carpet, of which I have never seen. Take damage equal to the dungeon level if I fail, but do not make a second agility check. So my agility is only five, and I cannot afford to level it up. I am one shy. I failed. Uh, so I just took five damage. Oh my god. Uh, and do not make a second agility check. I mean, that was it. That was my last chance to get ex experience, and it's not... Dang, what a horrible room. Okay, so now we're in real trouble. We're going into a combat. We have only half of our life. So before we go there, maybe we down our healing potion. Um, this could potentially heal us for seven, though. I can always use it in the middle of combat. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. The Pit of Despair. <laughs> I'm not going to make it to the boss. Draw three monsters and resolve combat. My last combat card would have been... Oh, this would have been bad, too. That was a lot of words. Draw three monsters and resolve combat. Okay, well... I can't believe it. An ogre mage. A oh, dang it, I don't have a torch. We have a mummy in here. And a devil. Oh, my goodness. So the order here... Look at all the special abilities these guys have. Wow. 
This is cool. Okay. So the devil first, because it's at 14, right? So we have an eight. Oh God. So I need a six or better. I got a 10. Good. So that's only four damage though. And it has how many hit points? Nine. Uh, okay. And it's plus two because of the other guys. A nine again. Good. Okay. So that's four more damage. Ah, I wish I had a way to do one damage. And a, ooh, a two and a two. So it's going to clobber me for five damage. So all I can do is dump both of these. This is three damage and this is two damage. So there it is. I am out of gear. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, an eight is good. Yeah, that's a 16 for me. So boom, there we go. So the devil is down because it had a 14. So the devil is down. That would bring the mummy back with a 14. So real fast here, let's get our five experience. What does that do for me? Six, uh, and a 12. I have a 12 experience. That, that could get my intelligence up to a seven, but eh, it's not gonna really do me any good here. Um, oh, and an, an item. So we'll take this, the Staff of Striking. Discard to increase a combat roll by plus two. That's gonna be very handy here in just a moment, I think. Okay, so the mummy has a what? A 14? So we have an 8, so we need a 6 or higher. A 1 and a 2, are you serious? So I'm about to get hit for 4 points of damage. So yeah, I, I don't even think I have anything I can do about it. Uh, now we can drink a potion of healing, I suppose. Let's do that. It's going to be a d6 plus 2 for, for us. Oh, this is bad. I mean, of all the cards to draw... Uh, so that's four hit points back. Oh, no. <laughs> We're not going to make it to the boss. Even on easy mode here. So what is that? That's eight. That's 13. And it has a 14. So I can use my staff of striking to roll this up by two. So that five becomes a seven. That five becomes a seven. The problem with that is it also triggers whatever seven is. Oh, I forgot. Seven is paralyzed. Hero loses one agility. So I'm going to go down in an agility point. Um, but we do get to hit. Yeah, All right, right, five, six, seven plus, plus eight. Uh, yeah, okay, so we're going to hit, and it's not going to hit back. Are we really seriously gonna die right at the front steps here? I need four damage. Four damage, okay. Oh, come on. I'm out of cards to chuck. Oh, I got a nine, so that's four more damage. We're good, that's nine plus uh, eight is 17, is higher than their 14. We need to do one more point of damage. What if I gave it a bag of gold? Yeah, I can't afford to get rid of an item, that's for sure. Oh, no, oh, a 10. All I can see was the one from my angle. Okay, so we got this guy. Whew, so the mummy is down. Boy, it would have been a whole lot easier to just torch him, right? Okay, so again, five experience points and one loot card. Bolas, ooh, what does that do? Uh, discard during the targeting phase of combat to place an ensnare token on a monster. I don't have any idea how ensnare works. That could be really fun. We also now have, what, uh, Let's see here, there's 10, 15, we have 17 experience, gosh. Well, I don't know, if we can push it a little harder here. So this guy, Ogre Mage, has nine hit points. Yeah, I really need a weapon, buddy. Uh, what does Ensnare do? Ensnare, Ensnare, place an Ensnare token on hero. What, what, okay. It doesn't tell me, like, what Ensnare does. <laughs> it just says... <laughs> okay, well, perhaps... That could have used a little bit of work. Let me see if I can find it real fast here in the book. How funny. Like, it, it's got to be just that, like, it doesn't, uh... Monster of Billies. Check if the final value of the combat roll apply. Let's see. Resolve the effect if the monster is not asleep or ensnared. So it sounds like ensnare prevents them from attacking. Okay, so let's... let's... Right? That's what that sounded like? Evasion targeting... Ensnare. Where did I see that? Evasion targeting. It sounds like if the monster's not asleep or ensnared. Okay, monsters, but check the final value of the combat roll after applying any modifiers matches the special ability if it's not asleep or ensnared. So, oh, it'll just stop its ability. 
does it say like for a whole during the targeting phase uh, when does it go away would be my question right special ability let's see applied damage Monsters or heroes are asleep or ensnared during the apply phase cannot do damage. Monsters or heroes that are asleep or ensnared during the apply damage phase cannot do damage. So it must be only one round. So let's go ahead and ensnare this guy. Because, I mean, it obviously wouldn't be fair if it lasted every round, right? So here, so I'm an 8, so I need, a, again, a 7 or better to not get smacked in the face. How about two ones? What kind of a roll was that? So great. I mean, it saved me the ensnare, but now it's gone, right? Is that how that works? Uh, okay, then it's next round. I mean, I guess that saved my bacon, although I could have hit it, had it hit itself. We have a three and a three. Oh my goodness. Okay, so it's going to hit me. I'm out of options. I have nothing left in my, my little bag of tricks except for the hand of God. Discard to redirect damage from any monster attack back onto that monster. Boom. So the monster just did three damage to themselves. Yeah, this is not looking uh, looking good for our hero. I want to see an enemy. Ooh, there's a nine, so that's a hit for us. So that's going to be a four damage. There's a three and there's a four, so that's seven. So we just have to have one more successful hit. And a six plus an eight is a 14. Oh, we both get hit. Did I just die? It hit me for three, so this four becomes a one, and it dies. So now, <laughs> we're going to go into the boss fight with two hit points. Uh, let me gain some experience for this. That's five. We're going to put that away. We're going to draw a loot card. Sneaky slippers. Consider the dungeon level negative two camping gear rolls for... Uh, and for combat evasion. So that was like the most useless card I could have possibly drawn. So literally, we are at the door to the boss. I am only doing four damage per round. I have no more armor, no more spells, no more anything, but I have all of this experience to spend here. So here's 15. Here's 20 experience right here. That's going to put my, my strength at nine. That's going to leave me two experience points I can do absolutely nothing with. And here we go to the boss. Now the way the boss works is, I guess these are all boss cards. Let me see if any of them are not allowed in here. Nope, there's no little icons on them. We're going to shuffle them up and we're going to see what is going to eat us. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't make too big of mistakes in any of this. There's, there's a, there, It's not like it's hard. There's just a lot going on the track with things. But uh, it's a ton of fun. I mean, it really feels like you are crawling through a dungeon. And I think once you get to know these cards, you can be a little bit better prepared. You know, like... Uh, you know the value of a torch and a rope, it feels like now, right? I certainly do. I don't know about you. Um, I also have absolutely no idea what to make of the boss here. So let's see. Look at that. There's a vampire in here. I used every trick in the book. This is going to come down to dice rolls for me because I have zero gear left. I have nothing. Nothing. I can discard nothing. I have no spells. It's literally going to come down to just don't be bad at rolling dice against a Balrog. Whew. 26. Yeah, we're going to get smoked. <laughs> 15 to hit this thing and it's going to do it's going to one shot me. Uh so basically I need to make uh eight oh my god. Seven. I need to make seven successful rolls and a successful roll is a seven or higher. I have no way to not take damage anymore, I don't think. Right? I don't think so. Uh, I have no more luck. Discard to inflict one damage and increase a combat roll by plus one. Discard to... So, right. Uh, I either... Oh, yeah. <laughs> so let's just see how bad I get wrecked. Uh, there's a ten, so we're going to do four points of damage. Okay. I just need to roll, like, seven tens, and I'm good. Right? So, oh, there's two fours, right? So that only gives me a thirteen, which is not good enough. Uh, the four, I mean, see, so the other option is I start discarding cards. I don't really have a choice, right? So if this guy hits me with these two fours, I die. I only have two hit points. So if I discard, uh, discard to inflict one damage and increase a combat roll by plus one, and I can do it again, right? Oh, no, but that makes it a six. Oh, I think I'm dead no matter what then. Because if I adjust that to a six, I take reflect attack, which sounds wonderful, right? If a monster's hit, a uh, hero takes their own weapon damage instead of the monster, so obviously that's not going to happen. 
And if I do a five, that's only a 14. That's not good enough to hit. So I miss and I get hit and killed on round two with the Balrog. I literally have nothing else that I see in front of me. Yeah, there's, there's nothing to do here. There's nothing I can do. Oh, man. I mean, I could bring it down to, to, uh, to 20 hit points if I discard these two, but then I take my own damage back, which kills me, which is going to be four, and I only have two hit points, right? Um, or it just hits me, and I take four damage, and I have no way to block it. So, ah, oh, amazing, amazing. But I just, I was not prepared. I'm, I'm, I'm just thankful that in one go at this, and again, I've, I've played it on Steam, so I know kind of how the first edition looks. And there's a lot of very similar uh, cards here. Maybe maybe they're the exact same? I don't know. Um, uh, but anyway, the game is fantastic. This is Rogue Dungeon. I highly, highly recommend this for, um, I don't know about group play, but I love the idea of this for solo play. Uh, it plays a lot faster on Steam if that took too long. It also plays a whole lot faster if you're not talking to a camera. Uh, but anyway, it is very enjoyable. There's a lot of cards uh, in this in this stack. There's so much stuff. I have cards out here you can't even see. Uh, a million little tokens over here that I don't know what they're for. Right? There's there's a lot going on, <laughs> and, it, and it plays very simply, and then again, you have those giant dungeons on the back, which are super cool. Look at that. They're on the back of the uh, the player sheet here and, like, the, the dungeon board here, so you can you can do, like, a mega dungeon if you like the idea of that better, and then I got to work out in the... I'm sure it said in the manual, and I just didn't notice uh, what side of these I should be using, but I'm not so sure it matters. It's kind of... They're all balanced the exact same. There's no one that has four yellows on it, right? They all have three yellows, three reds, and then one of every other color. It's just the maze you go through, so I don't see any reason not to just mix them up and just play that way. In any case, thanks for watching, everybody. That was Rogue Dungeon 2nd Edition, and remember, games are made for everyone's recreation. I'll see you next time.